Then from our form, let's add the logic behind our reject changes button. So if not company dataset dot has changes. Gonna give them a message box. Just cut and paste this one. Else. Do a dialogue. Result equals message box dot show are you sure and check the result. If result equals it's equal to yes, then we are going to reject the changes. Company tracker data say dot reject changes. Before we run it, I need to show you two mistakes that I made in the company DAC in the create company data adapter method. I left off a comma here, so you need to add that comma here. And then in the update SQL, you need to be sure and put this where clause where company ID equals company ID. So let's run it. Let's add a new company, call it 15 PLC Inc. So we've added this new company to the, to the to the data set, and at the same time, let's delete a company and let's modify one. And let's apply all the changes that we've made to the database. So let's add a filter to our grid view. Let's go to our form and we'll add a text box that we'll use for the filter. Should you click on it, go into the functions and double click on the text changed function. Inside of this, we'll create a data table. Company table equals company tracker dot tables. Create a data view. new data view company table dv dot row filter equals we're going to filter on company name but you can play around with this and make it anything you wanted to like plus text box one dot text So we'll make it anything starting with what is entered. And then data grid view dot data source equals DV. So we'll run it. And we can filter anything with the two that begins with the two or that begins with the C.
conclusion, we reused some of the concepts we, we learned in lesson one. We, we created a disconnected data set on a Windows form using C Sharp. Insert, update, delete data from a data set using C Sharp. And we saved and rejected the changes to a SQL Server database using C Sharp.